Hope everybody's doing great. Um, great weekend uh, here on, on Rocky Top. Obviously, uh, a unique celebration, just uh, the way the game unfolded and, and uh, you know, the passion and, and pageantry that was uh, Saturday here in Neyland from, uh, from the morning until the celebration on the back end. A, a truly, uh, really unique experience. So, appreciate our fans. Uh, they were awesome all night long. and, and uh, uh, this morning, uh, for our players, uh, we pushed forward. Uh, for our staff, we did it yesterday when we got back in the building. Uh, had a really good morning with the guys. Um, obviously, you know, from the outside looking in, everybody's excited about the win. From the inside, uh, looking forward, uh, we got a lot of things that we have an opportunity to get a whole lot better at. And, and the challenge for us is to become our best. Uh, we're in the early stages of that, uh, the urgency and, and preparation and focus. Uh, has to remain consistent, and, and uh, you know that was the message to the players. Uh, looking forward to uh, to getting it going here this this week. Um, you know this weekend will be a unique one as well. It's homecoming. Uh, we'll have a lot of former uh, students, former players that uh, will be back for this one. Look forward to to celebrating uh, homecoming with them. Uh, it's unique too that. Uh, this is a celebration of Title IX and obviously Pat Summit and her legacy in sports and her legacy here at, uh, at UT is, is really special and we'll have a chance to, to celebrate that too. So looking forward to that this weekend. I'll open it up. We'll start with West and Vince. Josh, to the extent that, that you can see kind of these things on Monday morning, do you feel like the guys did come in with the right mindset? Did they feel Today? like it? Yeah. Yeah, they got a good dose of reality from uh, from their position coaches and from me too. And um, but the, the the look in their eye too said that they, that they wanted to improve. And um, you know, the the short time that we spent on the grass was was really good. And um, I'm looking forward to to this week unfolding the right way. The reason that we've been able to play and, and find a way to win each week is their preparation has been good, not perfect, but but been really good. And that urgency, uh, that focus. As we get our game plan, get on the on practice field here in the early part of the week is going to be critical. And, and uh, I say it every week: it's about us, it's about you know our preparation, but it's the challenge is about us becoming our best too. And um, they all understand there's a lot of things that we got to get better at. Josh, I, I know you often want to deflect attention, credit, all that kind of stuff to the the team and the program. Yeah, but I'm not just deflecting it; those things happen because of of the players and because of the coaches. Right. Um, so, what was the later on that night for you? I'm sure it included some recruiting. What was not that some, like? For there, you? there was a lot of recruiting. Uh, uh, long celebration in the locker room, as there should be after uh, a win uh, like that, and just the way it unfolded and. and uh, that game anyways. Uh, that's a celebration that uh, we want to have more of. Um, you know, opportunity on the back end of that to do a bunch of recruiting. Um, there was a, a great amount of guys that were here and, and uh, that's important for the future of our program. Um, you know, I got post game things that I got to do too. Uh, and uh, so once I got out of here and got home, you know, probably close to midnight, Got a chance to spend a bunch of time with uh, my family. Had a bunch of friends in for the game too, and um, you know, eventually get to bed at some point in the early morning. Okay, so you answered my question. That's what I wanted you to kind of uh, expand on. Uh, take us through the final series when you guys get the ball back, 15 seconds to go. Your game plan, the repetitions you've had in that situation, things like that. Yeah, um, you know, you you practice those things in, in training camp, um, how you want to function and operate. Um, in a, in a lot of different scenarios. It's impossible to give those guys those scenarios every single week. Love the fact that our kids understood what we were trying to accomplish, you know, from wide outs to quarterback to, you know, protection up front, able to go execute in, in those situations. The fact that we still had timeouts left was, was critical. Um, you know, our guys understanding, uh, you know, the concepts that we're running, uh, but being able to, to handle, you know, the pressure of that situation, go out and execute, uh, speaks to it. You know, we try to replicate some of those scenarios throughout the course of the week, um, but you're really kind of cycling through those things. And, and uh, it was a big time performance by those guys at the end of the football game. So when you when they missed the field goal and you've got 15 seconds left, are, you immediately looked at your play sheet. You didn't really have much of an emotional response. Is that in those moments? Do you feel like it's more just about stay on course? 
Well, I mean, you immediately transition, right? They make the field goal. You're, you're flipping to a different scenario, and, and you got to go play that out and execute it. And they miss it. Where are we at? Time a lot, uh, allotted. Timeouts left. You know, how do we go get two chunks and, and uh, get ourselves in the field goal range? So, absolutely, you flip, flip the script. And your players have to do that as well. Well, the players have complimented you a lot on your even-keeled nature, not just within games, but also week to week. Um, I'm curious to know if that's like a natural part of your personality or is it a learned behavior from your dad or coaches? Um, my dad was a lot more emotional than I, than I am uh, on the sidelines. Um, might be because he's a defensive guy by nature too. Um, I, I think having played the position and uh, I'm saying playing quarterback, having been in a lot of different positions, understanding uh, I think, you know, from being a kid to being a player that your your players are going to feel off of you way more than they listen to you. They feed off of your body language and and, uh, and your energy that you uh, you give off. So, uh, you know, I try to be consistent and calm in those situations, hopefully keeping them calm in the storm, too. Coach, your, your team did a, a lot of things well on Saturday, and I'm sure you're probably not as familiar with some of the history as we are, but that's the first time in a long time that Tennessee has been more physical than Alabama up front. Averaged almost a full yard more per carry running the game. Did you anticipate that going in, and what can you say about your guys in the trenches on both sides? Um, in comparison to them, I didn't really look at it that way. Knew the physicality was something that we were going to have, have to win. The line of scrimmage was going to be important on both sides of the line of scrimmage for us defensively. Um, you know, our front seven uh, safeties in, in, uh, in their fits, uh, defeat blocks, uh, get off and make plays was going to be critical not to let their running game get started when, when their backs got out in space. That, that's, a, that's an issue. Um, and then for us on the offensive line, uh, we knew that the run game, you guys heard me uh, say it, I think, earlier in the week, that there's a huge difference in twos against those guys because of how third down gets played out versus four, five, sixes. And, and, uh, the tempo, the mentality, the attitude, the way we showed it to the team today, um, just the way we finished our runs, the pile moving forward was a huge, huge difference in that game. And, and uh, um, proud of the effort and strain that, uh, that everybody had on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Josh, do you have an update on Jalen McCullough? And then with his lack of availability Saturday, was that a coach's decision or an administrative decision? Yeah, um, he's not suspended. Um, he's been around, uh, just wasn't available for, uh, for Saturday. Um, process still going on uh, with him, and, and we'll see how that continues to play out here. Um, look forward to having him available uh, soon. Coach, you, you talked about the offensive line as a group, and obviously that, that position has to operate collectively, but, but Darnell Wright, what you say about his performance and sort of his growth <laughs> over the course of the season? Yeah, Dar Darnell did a great job uh, starting just in, in pass protection. Uh, our offensive line as a whole did a really, really good job. Um, he was solid all night long, won his one-on-ones, uh, I thought, in, in the run game. Um, did a really nice job. That was when he was in man blocking one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But some of the double teams on the right side of the line of scrimmage were, you know, changed the way the, the game was played. I uh, thought he played really solid football all night long. <coughs> There's a lot of compliments that always get said about Hendon Hooker, and rightfully so. There were a couple of plays like the fumble six that didn't go his way. How about his short-term memory and his composure that really does bleed into the rest of the offense? Just talk to me a little bit about his composure as well. Yeah, great players um, and great quarterbacks have to be able to reset from, from one play to the next. Um, there's no way you're going to go out and play a perfect game. Uh, you have the ball in your hands all the time. Uh, eventually, it probably doesn't go your way. I've been really fortunate that it has gone his way, our way, um, you know, most of the, uh, the first half of the season. Um, the other night, um, his maturity, his understanding of the game um, allows him, when something isn't perfect, it doesn't go right, to understand the why behind it, which gives you confidence and calmness uh, to be able to go reset and play the next play. There's no doubt that his maturity and his confidence and his ability to reset also allows the 10 other guys around him and our entire offensive unit to do that as well. Um, you can't take, uh, take that for granted. Josh, UT Martin on film, the challenges they may present offensively and defensively? Yeah, um, you know, for us, uh, offensively, 
us defensively, them offensively. They've put up uh, a bunch of points, a bunch of yards here in the first half of the season. Line of scrimmage is going to be important. Uh, we got to apply pressure to the quarterback and got to be able to match guys out on the outside on the perimeter. It would be important to win the line of scrimmage on the defensive side of the football in, in this one. You know, for us offensively, line of scrimmage is where it starts. We've got to be able to run the football. Um, you know, defensively, um, in their structure, uh, we've got to be able to understand what they're playing, uh, adjust to it, and then go win some one-on-ones out on the perimeter. Two things. After going back and watching the film, what did you think of how Brandon Turnage played Saturday? And then two, dipping out of conference this week, a game, you know, you know, you could get some younger kids in. How much do you try to, you know, if, if you can get to that point in the game, get them in as early as, as possible to build, help build some depth for this last month push? Yeah, um, the first question was about uh, Brandon. Is that right? Uh, Br Brandon was really solid. Uh, just some good things on, on special teams helped us get the, the first punt return uh, started that we had. Um, did a really good job when he was in there uh, defensively, matching things out and man to man. He's a really smart, intelligent player. And uh, we have a lot of trust in, in him. Um, as far as young guys playing, um, you know, the other night's a perfect example. You don't know when your opportunity is going to come, come up. And, um, you know, Will Wright's out there at the end of the football game uh, playing his butt off. So uh, for all of our guys, continuing to prepare, uh, being ready for your opportunity whenever that comes uh, this weekend, um, you know, we're going to have to play a bunch of guys. So um, look forward to seeing all of our guys go out and compete. Josh, I, I guess there, there's no way to give a percentage on something like this, but when you went back and watched the film of, you know, Bama's offense versus y'all's defense, how much of that stuff was just really good players making plays and how much of it was stuff that you can watch and say, could have cleaned some stuff up there? There's things that we can absolutely uh, clean up. And, um, you know, that's from, from coverage to matching things out to understanding scramble drill, your end zone coverage, you better uh, match things out. Uh, it's containing the quarterback. It's making plays on the quarterback. Um, at the same time, um, you know, they got a special player back there, too, that was able to extend plays and create some things, too. So uh, I do love the, the way we continue to reset and go play the next play and continue to play hard. Back to Aaron. You mentioned William Wright being out there at the end of the game. Yeah. If you go back to spring practice, there was a lot of injuries. He was, he was out there getting a lot of reps and getting better. Okay. Is that something that you can move forward and kind of – you know, coach and use it as a teachable moment for, for everybody? Yeah, I talked about it this morning with uh, our football team. He, he did some really, really good things throughout the course of spring ball. Um, you know, his ability to trust us and to continue to grow, you know, from the time that we've shown up uh, is a part of why he's grown as a player. Um, unfortunate, gets nicked up on the back half of, of training camp. Uh, we had planned on him playing a lot of football for us, uh, starting first and foremost on special teams. and. Um, you know, he's been banged up. It's easy to check out when you're, you're nicked up and not be engaged in meetings and continue to grow mentally uh, as you uh, are rehabbing. That wasn't him, man. He was fully engaged in everything. And uh, it's a great lesson for all of our players that you don't know when your opportunity is coming. And all of a sudden, you know, he's playing on special teams, but uh, all of a sudden you're thrust out there in, the, in you know, one of the most critical moments defensively, too, and does a really nice job. It's a, it's a great lesson for everybody, especially our young players in, in the program. Anything else? All right, thank you. Guys, appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great Monday afternoon.